Hello, YouTubers. I am very excited today to bring you the very first computer role-playing game I ever played in the history of Ron Stockian Game Hordian RPG history. That's right, Ultima 6 received this game back in the day when it first came out. It was the very first game. I played it on a uh, 286 with 12 megahertz and uh, 4 megs of RAM and uh, pretty much blew my fucking mind. The freedom, the ability to go and to do anywhere you want, and to kill anything you want to kill, and to pick up and utilize anything you want to utilize. Truly one of the most amazing RPG games in all of history, and still yet to this day, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It is my honor, my very utmost honor, 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 to bring you Ultima VI, in a game hoarder, let's play. Upon your world, five seasons have passed since your triumphant homecoming from Britannia. You have traded the Avatar's life of peril an adventure for the lonely serenity of a world at peace. But television Superman cannot take the place of your friends who died at your side. Outside, a chill wind rises. And in moments, the storm is upon you. Tongues of lightning lash the sky, conducting an unceasing crescendo of thunder. In a cataclysm of sound and light, a bolt of searing blue fire strikes the earth. Lightning among the stones? Is this a sign from distant Britannia? You bolt from your house, stumbling, running blind in the storm, into the forest, down the path, through the rain, to the stones. Near the stones, the smell of damp, blasted earth hangs in the air. In a frozen moment of lightning-struck daylight, you glimpse a tiny obsidian stone in the midst of the circle. Wondering, you pick it up. And from the heart of the stones, a softly glowing door ascends in silence. Exultant memories wash over you as you clutch the stone. When last you saw an orb such as this, it was classed down by Lord British to banish the tyrant Blackthorn. But your joy soon gives way to apprehension. The gate to Britannia has always been blue. As blue as the morning sky. Abruptly the portal quivers and begins to sink into the ground. Its crimson light wanes. Desperation makes the decision an easy one. Ultima Six, the False Prophet. We're going to create a character. We have the buff blonde avatar. This is the guy portrayed actually on the cover art. He kind of looks like a fairy. I'm not black. I'm not old. And I'm not retarded. Nor am I a dwarf. Let's go with this guy. Rock a mosquito. A 
lonely stroll along the unfamiliar woods path brings you upon a curious gypsy woman, its exotic colors dappled in the summer shade. A woman's voice rings out with friendship, beckoning you into across the wagon threshold, and as it happens, into another life. At last thou hast come to fulfill thy destiny, the gypsy says. She smiles as if in great relief. Sit before me now and I shall pour the light of the virtue into the shadows of thy fortune. On a wooden table, eight bottles stand, a rainbow of bubbling liquids. Behold, the virtues of the Avatar, the woman says. Let us begin the casting. In thy youth, thou didst pledge to marry thy sweetheart. Now thou art a sacred quest in the distant lands. Thy sweetheart doth ask thee to keep thy vow. Dost thou honor thy pledge to wed or follow thy spiritual crusade. Now, of course, what we're doing here is we're creating our character based on the attributes, strength, dexterity, charisma, things of that nature. What they want you to do is honor, or is to answer the questions as honestly as possible. I'd have to go on my spiritual crusade. to cost thee and demands thy food. Dost thou valiantly refuse and engage the knight, or sacrifice thy rations into a hungry knight? My avatar never backs down from a brawl. Unwitnessed, thou hast slain a mighty dragon in the defense of thy life. A poor warrior claims the offered reward. Dost thou justly step forward to claim the bounty, or humbly go about thy life, secure in thy self-esteem? Fuck that, that's my kill! Entrusted to deliver an unaccounted purse of gold, thou dost meet the poor beggar. Dost thou deliver the gold honestly, knowing the trust in thee is well placed, or show compassion and give the beggar a coin, knowing it won't be missed? You're getting a little bit of everything. Thus thou believe the virtue resides in all people. Dost thou seek a rogue steal from the Lord? Dost thou call him to justice, or personally try to sway him back to the spiritual path of good? Thou hast managed to disarm the mortal enemy. He is at thy mercy. Do you show him compassion by permitting him to yield, or slay him, as expected of a valiant duelist? Death. I like red because it gives you more strength. A local bully pushes for a fight. Dost thou valiantly trounce the rogue, or decline, knowing in thy spirit that no lasting good will come of it? And when you drain one of the vials, the path is decided. The path of the Avatar lies beneath thy feet where they run stuck. The gypsy intones with a mysterious smile. She passes you the flask of shimmering liquids. Drink of these waters, and go forth among our people, who shall receive thee in joy. As you drink from the flask, vertigo overwhelms you. A soothing mist obscures the gypsy's face, and you sink without fear into an untroubled sleep. You wake in a different time, upon another world's shore. Though the Avatar's quest brings you both triumph and tragedy, never do you stray from the path of the Eight Virtues. The sagas of Ultima IV and Ultima V chronicle your perilous travels, and your name and your deeds have written among Britannia's legends. Finally tempered by your struggles against the enemies of the virtue, you have proven ready to answer the epic challenge of Ultima VI. Alright. Dazed and emerged from the portal, you find yourself standing on a desolate plain. Nearby rests a massive rune-struck altar shrouded in moonlit fog. At first, the plane is still. Then a hundred voices raise a slow death-like song, drawing closer and closer with each passing moment. You are seized by an urge to run. But you have no place to go. 
Before you can offer a protest to the creatures who surround you, scaly claws grasp your body. With unearthly strength, the monsters bind you to the altar stone. Kneeling, the hordes sway and chant as, stately, as a stately winged nightmare steps forward. The leader unwraps a velvet-covered brass-bound book and recites from it in a formal stilted tone. Shouts and jeers explode from the masses as the priest slams shut the book. In his hand, a malignant dagger drips with moonlight. You close your eyes. A dying scream, certainly your own, curdles the air. Cat calls. The dagger. A scream. Death. Pandemonium. Shrieks of rage, of terror. From the inevitable, an impossibility emerges. You are still alive. Silent red light fills the darkness. There is a wooden clack of a crossbow, and the violet fletched rose blooms in the priest's barren forehead. He goes down hard. Friendly faces vault from a newborn moon gate, while a rain of quirls holds the furious mob at bay. The knight the priest's sword flashes twice in the darkness, slicing away your bonds. Old friend, to the gate! Accompanied by the swordsman, Shamino, and a grinning crossbow, wheeling Iolo, the bar, Dupree thrust a spare sword into your hand. Snatching the fallen priest's book, Iolo, Iolo dives into the redness with Shamino at his heels. The howling throng surges forward, all of one terrible mind. The gate wanes rapidly as you and Dupree charge through, but not rapidly enough. From the mob's vanguard, three of the abominations scramble toward the gate. Driven by fury, the creatures hurl their bodies into the portal's last hand span of light. And thus the game begins. Alright. So here we have our party. Ronstock, Dupree, Shamino, and Iola. This is all turn-based action. Unlike Ultima 7. Now, back in the day, the sound effects actually come from the came from the internal speaker of your computer. So, uh, not sure if we can get those to play. We're just attacking our ass off here. Of course, the other uh, party members automatically attack based on uh, some sort of AI from back in the day. Now I just have to remember how to uh, stop attacking. Well, I can always click the sword. So let's search the bodies of the gargoyles. You find a boomerang. Club and leather armor. Club and a shield, all right. up with 23 strength, 20 dexterity, and 18 intelligence, 36 magic, magic, 90 health. First you can view your different party members here, Dupree, who's kind of our knight in shining armor, Shimino, who is kind of our uh, ranger of sorts, and Iolo, who's, maybe he's more of our ranger, he's kind of the old wise, whatever. Can't really classify these guys. Let's talk to Lord British. 
you see the ruler of Britannia. Ronstock, tis good to see thee again. Much hath happened since thou last departed our realm. But I must make sure tis truly thee. Only the true avatar would know what was contained in the compendium I sent. What part of the tangle vine that thou put one to sleep? Uh-oh. Better look that up real quick. Why, the answer is, of course, thorns. What the fuck? Goddamn fucking camp stage, go the fuck away! Stupid fucking program. Thou art correct. How what the headless is produced? By two other headlesses fucking, obviously. Failed experiment. Thou art correct. How does sea serpents attack? Ah, this indeed, Ronstock. Take this key. It will unlock the gatehouse by the southern entrance to the castle. Then you can use the lever inside to raise the portcullis. The crank will lower the drawbridge. The same key will also let you enter the sewers under the castle. Now, let me tell thee what has transpired since thy last visit. The vast underworld from which thou didst rescue me has collapsed. Yet, still there are forces of evil abroad in the land. Britannia is under attack by gargoyles such as those thou just fought. They have been coming up through the dungeons. Thus far they have mainly been attacking the shrines of the Eight Virtues. When the Shrine of Compassion did us fall, Sir Joffrey sent a party to free it. Though you ask him of the mission, perhaps thou can prove us some assistance. Whilst there are here, I have a room in the castle set aside for thy personal use. Tis in the west wing of the castle just south of my own chambers. I have had my servants place some equipment there, in case thou should have need of it. Of course thou may feel free to borrow anything in my castle if thou shouldest need. Lastly, any time thou dost need healing, do thou but ask me. If thou ask me to repeat all of this later, thou need but ask. May fortune favor thee, Ron Stark! Let's explore Castle Britannia for a bit. This is of course our bedroom. We'll get our spell book here. There's many items. Let's look at the dressers here. Hats and a tunic. I don't think we'll need the club. We have some ale, some loaves of bread, and some food. The red potion that weighs 0.3 stones. And our over the moons, of course, and some lockpicks. Of 
course, you can move around anything you want. Hubert's Hair Rise in Adventure, written by Bill Pete. Hubert the Lion was haughty and vain, and especially proud of his elegant mane. But conceit of this sort is not proper at all, and Hubert the Lion was due for a fall. Picks here. Unlocked. Ow! Oh, took a fireball to the face. Sorry, we got some chain out of it. filled with the law of British's notes on his astronomical observations. Of course, we can use the telescope. Doesn't do much for you. Solo quest, and then bring them all back together. Assuming they find their way to you. <clears throat> Lightning wand. If you're looking for a clue, there's something for you under the plant and serpent's hold. Hang on to that clue page. We'll look later at Serpent's Hold. You see a cute little mouse. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Talking to a mouse, says Dupree. Methinks you're starting to imagine things. Squeak, squirk. Sherry, do you have any cheese? Oh, that's too bad. Get the fuck out of here. Because we got some free potions here as well. Let's talk to the jester. You see a carefree fellow in a ludicrous costume. Hoi, uh, he hum, I got a clue. It's important and just for you. Clue? Yes, it's crucial to your quest. Do you want to know what it is? Uh, yes. Perhaps I don't want to tell you. Do I think I will? How foolish of you to think so. I won't tell you the clue, but I will give you this hint that may lead you to it. Search the chest in Nigel's room. What's your name, silly bastard? Why, I'm Chuckles, the jester, of course. You've heard of me, haven't you? Sure you have. Jester? Have you heard the one about the nun, the dragon, and the drunken penguin? That's too bad, neither have I. <laughs> All right, we're done with him. I did my best to amuse you. I hope if not, I hope I did confuse you. Did you enjoy my jokes? You did? Then I'll tell you another one. Riddle me this. Do you know what the goose said to the avatar? He said, Ack, ack. What did you think of that one? Well, who asked you anyway? Oh, that's right. I did. <laughs> to spread good cheer I go. Come talk to me again and I'll give another show. 
Uh, we'll pass. This is, of course, the dining hall. There's some cheese. We can give to Sherry. And the butcher. He's got all kinds of meat. It's a tasty treat. You see a bad chest and muscular man, his body gleaming with sweat. Excuse me a moment. He pulls a napkin from his belt and mops his brow. Now, what were you saying? Wait a minute, he interrupts. I recognize you. You're the Avatar. I've always wanted to meet you. You're the greatest hero in all the land. Maldrick. I am once Maldrick the Boar Hunter. Now Maldrick the Cook. Boar? Aye. I used to live in the forest and hunt wild boars. But one day I presented a roast to Boar as a gift to his majesty, and he liked it so much he hired me as a cook. The secret is in the spices. It's an old family recipe. I'll never tell. See you later. Next time, dine with His Majesty. I'll be cooking something special. Let's head back and see if we can find, find Mousy Mouse. Let's ask about British. He reads me bedtime stories every night. He knows the one about Hubert, the lion by heart. That's my favorite story. Using the key Lord British gave us, we can lower the gate and open the por the portcullis, and we are free from Castle Britannia. But let's go explore a little bit in the sewers first. How are we doing here on health? Can always use the commands to do everything here. We have use, move, drop, get. Talk and look. That's rest and attack. Cast magic with a spell book. Priority has plate armor and a plate helm with a kite shield. Shimino has on chain and of course Iolo's in his leather. Taking everyone's money. Oh, he's got gold nuggets here. Well, if Dupree wants to hold the money, that's fine with me. So we have 115 gold pieces and 12 golden butt nuggets. 
and I'll see you next video. I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I am going to enjoy playing it again.